Alright everyone, welcome to my Desert Realm tutorial. I'm not going to do a flyover for this one, just because there's some issues with the camera right now. Now, I do want to stop here and just start with the first thing that you'll need to know. Um, so your frame rate affects your downforce, as well as your nitrox. If your frame rate is 30 or 60, you will come out of the portal quite high up in the air. So I'm actually going to just show you that now. So I'm going to drop my frames to 30. And we're going to go for it. So I'm not going too fast here. When I come out of this portal, I will be somewhat airborne and I won't actually land on the track. Now this isn't the worst thing in the world, but if you are trying to uh, do a speed run of the track, that's going to cause you a lot of issues. But for now, this is just a tutorial on finishing. I'm going to put it back up to max settings. Um, I'm going to go through here again. So, because of my max settings, even though I will be going faster through the portal this time, I will still most likely land on the track. There we go, not an issue. Alright, first thing you want to do is just follow the track on from here. Um, it's quite simple, this section, this is quite nice and easy. You can just continue on. Now, if you do have a good eye, you'll see out to the left there, because my settings are up to max, I can actually see the edge of the track. So the better your settings, the more visible that is. I'll see if I can just turn it down so you can just see the difference there. So I'm going to put everything too low. And now you'll see it's a lot harder to see the edge of the track, whereas it was quite visible before. I'm just going to back up. So it's much harder to see, but then if we set it back to all the high settings, it just makes the game just look that little bit neater and it makes that water just a little bit more noticeable so you can see the edge of the track but realistically the edge of the track is only really that important if you're speed running although seeing it does help if you do make a mistake so that bit there turns which means you've got to follow that turn just come along to here which again is another corner it's nothing too complex for this section quite nice and easy now next this one splits you out heading up this hill uh, as you can see there is that big line in the middle so we'll follow through there and we're heading straight up to these rocks now if you're going super if you're going for a speed run you can actually cut these rocks there but if not and you just want to get the track finished because you're having trouble come up here and you got these bit of tracks here now i don't recommend driving on the orange bits of track they do mess with uh your car especially at a higher speed they will flip you around and stuff like that so I try to avoid them where possible just because they're not even and if you hit those white bits on the side you'll pretty much always flip so see flipped awful next we have this pillar here now it does have a bit of a point to the right that is to say that you need to be on the right side of this pillar now you're actually not going to reach this pillar, there is a track just before it. But you want to be on the right side, the left side you're going to head too close to quicksand. So here we've got the track and it turns right. Not too bad. And then we've got this bit of track here. And it sends you off this way. Now it does send you off to the left side of these rocks, but you can take the right side. If you do want to just be sure of it, you can just come up and go through here. It is just a bit of a tighter turn. You don't have to. Uh, these two pillars here you're supposed to drive through. You can cut them and just go left. That's fine. And it brings you up here. You can also cut the left side of this rock, even though it does kind of guide you to the right. And there is a piece of track just there. But avoid tracks if possible. It's a big sad. That's all right. So that's why we want to avoid tracks, is because if you hit those bits of track, you will just fling off into the distance. I'm going to go a bit faster through here. Um, I'm not actually doing a run, so I can just add some nitrox. Uh, if you're not worried about making like a record or anything, feel free to add the extra nitrox. It's not too bad. Um, I try to stick to a thousand where possible, just because like. You know, when the game goes to its live version, once it's out of this uh, pre-alpha state, 
you won't be able to add that extra nitrox. So just, I'm trying to get in the habit of not having it, but for a tutorial video like this, it's good to have it. And I'll just show this cart here because it is available to us right now. So it just puts you on the left side of that track, but it is a very sharp turn to get back in. If you go too hard, you will get some air and you will come off the edge there. And the sand just to the left that I almost drove into. So up here is a right turn. Don't cut it too much, there is sand there. And then up here is this section. And again, I will show you the cut for this section. Um, so you can just cut through here. You don't actually have to go through the rocks or over the track. You also don't have to go through the two pillars, but you do want to get kind of close. And then we come up over this hill. And we're onto the normal track. Now, I'm not sure if you can go around this pillar. I think you can. I will just double check that now while we've got the opportunity. Pretty sure you can. Yeah, you can go around it. Uh, but you are generally supposed to go through it. The only issue I have with going through it is if you have any sort of speed and you go just that little bit too left, if you clip this, again, okay, it flips you out. Um, that costs you both a lot of time and can sometimes throw you into the sand if you hit it hard enough. So you can go at quite a high speed through most of this track. Now the next thing you want to do is once you get to here, you want to be heading straight for that jump rock. Yes, you'll lose sight of it, but as long as you remember where it is, you do want to head for it. You can drive over it if you're feeling brave, but most people will just cut this left side. It is faster. It is less likely to cause an accident. Like you're more likely to stay safe and stable. Do watch out for that left side. That left side does have some close sand. Just stick to the right here. Now you want to get between these two rocks. Again, you can cut the inside right of this rock as long as you don't cut too sharp. And then there's track here. So it was a nice straight section, a lot of opportunity for nitrox. Now follow this around here. You can cut the right side of that rock as well. Again, you don't want to be hitting the tracks. The tracks will just launch you. I'm going to go up through here. You can cut the inside there as well. But the general path is that you're supposed to go through here until you get to this piece of track. So this piece of track is actually a crossroads. Now, most people will go left. I'm not sure if they've actually, if Cat's actually fixed that left path yet. The left path I have a lot less experience with, so I'm not actually going to go through it for you right now. Um, but it looks like it has been fixed, because there used to actually be sand just here at the end of the track. It has been fixed up. That's good to see. Uh, that makes things a little easier. Again, you shouldn't be on the track anyway. Just stick to the left. But what you want to be doing, go back this way. Is after this section of track, where you can see that there, after this section, you do just want to go to the right. You don't actually want to go left, you want to go to the right. The little pointer on the side does remind you of that. And then you come up here, you can cut the right side of this rock here, but you are generally supposed to take the left. And there is a long piece of track just here. That it does take you up over this hill. Just follow it, trust it. If you ever get lost, that pillar there is where you're heading for. So do just aim for that if you need to. And there is a piece of track here just to remind you where you're going. If you hit that bit there at speed, you will flip. So just, again, avoid the track. Avoid it if possible. <coughs> and now we come up here, you want to go between these two rocks. It does look like you can take that left side but it's not overly important. If anything, that'll just lead you towards sand. Now just keep going straight till you see this rock and this rock here, and just go between them. As long as you go between these two, there's no issues. I am curious as to where the sand is and if you can take, you can take the inside of that rock there. Uh, it looks a bit tight though, so just do be wary of that. then you come over this rock here, uh, this hill, heading up to this rock, and you'll come into this corner, it's all pretty straightforward in this section, just go between the rocks, again these bits will just spit you off if you try and drive over them, so just go straight through, heading up to this chunk of road ahead. 
So yeah, having your settings all the way up will definitely help with being able to see the, where the quicksand is. Uh, but it's not essential as long as you do just follow the landmarks. Which, it's a lot easier to drive by landmarks than just trying to avoid like a slight discoloration on the edge of the track. <coughs> then just head straight through here. You're going to want to go between these rocks here. Now this is where the two split paths meet up. So they do come back here. This is getting towards the end of the track. You've got about a minute left from here. And then you want to take the right side, which is where the uh, top pillar is there. So that does signal that. And then you want to come in on the right side of this, which I call it Sweeper Rock, just because it does look kind of like a sweeper. And then you come in here. Now you do want to stay a little left on this hill. You take it easy, because if you go too fast and you're in the wrong spot, you're just going in the sand. Eventually you'll see that pillar and just head for it. From here it is a straight run. And this takes about 45 seconds of just going straight. And then you're at the portal. You will see the portal soon enough. And if you get too much speed, you will lose control of the car. So that's why I'm not just holding the nitrox button. The second pillar is the next marker. Just after that one, you will be able to see it from the first. And then from this one, you can see the portal at the end of the track. all just clean there's just there's no quicksand as long as you do stick straight it is a pretty wide section of track which is quite nice you don't want to hit this with too much speed if you do you will just bounce off so slow right down for it 300 350 is fine and that's how you get to the end all right so now from here i'm going to do a attempted speed run of the course and see if i can do something quickly on it uh the reason i choose audio one is because it has a good downforce a good top speed uh, it's got a decent grip nitrox is very limited on this track because it's such a long track uh, so you don't really have a lot of opportunities to use it so it's not the most essential thing but this car keeps its speed really well it's quite nice and fast so that's why I do like to use it So if you're trying to get this one just over and done with quickly or try to break a record, you want to do, you do want to stick to your right as best as you can, but there is a bumpy section there, so just try to avoid that. It is just that little bit lighter. It's quite easy to avoid. It can easily just end your run because it is just too, like, just too bumpy for, uh, for most cars. Most cars will just flip because of it. You want to chuck a little nitrox in for this section. this one as long as you do cut quite sharply you do have to have that very sharp hairpin style turn otherwise you will just hit the track essentially and you go too wide. A little burst of nitrox to keep your speed up they're very good we can sharply cut this one through here and you can take the outside there it is just that little bit faster to take the middle as long as you don't hit that bit try to get as close to jump rock as you can I could have gone a lot closer I took a bit of a risk there because that left side is bumpy and that quicksand comes out of nowhere on you now you cut this one here don't cut it too much there is quicksand there plus it is bumpy on the side you want to conserve your nitrox for those straight sections because there are some very straight sections. And just because you can see the discoloration where the quicksand is, do remember it is a little bit in from that. It's not directly there. You will fall through if you do cut too much. I'm going to try this cut here uh, just to see if it does work. It does seem a little close to quicksand, but we're going to give it a shot anyway and see how we go. It's 
very close to quicksand, but it seems like a decent time save. Oh, hitting that rock has cost me a lot of time. So I will nitrox to try and get some of that back. Although, realistically, you're not saving any time by nitrox in there, because that means that's less nitrox I have for later. But it is far more important to nitrox from a lower speed than a higher speed. Nitroxing to get to a, to about 400 is more important than nitroxing to get to 500. Unfortunately, this one looks to be just shy of my personal best. Based on the fact that there is just over a minute left here, and we will see how we go. From here, I have a lot more nitrox than I normally do at this point, so I can be a little less cautious with it. a fair bit of time but I'm gonna need to slow down here and it's a 138 yeah that's not my best uh, my best is a 135 but a 138 isn't an awful time uh, so oops that's not what I want. cars I recommend for this one just if you do have everything synchro doesn't really have any major issues but it's, it can flip out quite easy if you take your quarter too sharp Chicane is alright for the track, it's not bad at all. Uh, baseline is more of a drifty one, it's not so good. It uh, is a boost focus car with low acceleration. You just gotta find yourself going a bit slow. Realistically, any car is decent on this track, but only a select few are good. Slingshot I haven't had a lot of experience with. Reverb should theoretically be the best car for the track because it is the fastest car in the game. Uh, the downside is that it does come off the track quite easy uh, and a slight bump will easily flip you out, but if you can avoid that, this is the best car for the track. Uh, power range is awful on any track, uh, I imagine it would be average on this one. Jack Hammer has some troubles with speed, um, especially going uphill, so it does have that issue there. Pile driver is a pretty good all round car, so that's not too bad. Uh, power bomb is realistically only good for nitrox, so it's nothing too special. Uh, it's fine on this track, but it's a low nitrox track, so new nitrox just isn't going to be used as much. So unfortunately the car doesn't do too well compared to others. Spybus is fine for the track, it's a decent car all round. Uh, Roadrunner is a little prone to bumps and just spinning out. It's okay for the track, but again, nothing special. Flathead is basically just another Spybus, and there's really thickly not much difference between these two cars. Uh, Iridium is really good for this track, it has a really good top speed um, and it holds that top speed quite well, it's got a decent grip and it's quite stable, it's quite a nice car for this track. Uh, Kovlai is just as good, uh, it's slightly slower than Iridium, if you have an Iridium which is a default car, it's just better, Iridium is just better in this situation for this track, but this is a good one if you do want something that's just a little more stable. Technodium, uh, this is just a game, it's a worse cover light, it's a worse Iridium, it has really good grip, and it's a good fast car, but it's just so easy to flip it if you hit a bump wrong. Uh, Metalloid is just slightly worse version of these two for this track, it has a decent uh, speed, uh, it's nothing too special though, nothing significant stands out. Realistically, if you want to start this car, Iridium is your go-to for this track, and only for this track. <laughs> Maybe for Cosmic, but we'll get to that another time. RDO1 is brilliant for this track. I think it's probably the second best car on this one, just because of its high speed. Um, but it is very good for this track. It's quite nice and stable when compared to RDO6, which I think is a little bit faster. But I understand that even though it's a little bit faster, it has a weaker nitrox, it hasn't got as much downforce. 
um, just doesn't perform as well as RDO1. Uh, but theoretically it is faster, so it should be able to get through the track faster. RDO4, I thought this would be really good for this track. I thought this track would be very well designed for this car. Unfortunately, it's just not very good. Uh, it, it doesn't like bumps. This car is a lot more like Synchro and Technetium than like Baseline and Night Burner as it looks. Uh, sweeper is just the Sweeper. It's a bit of a meme. It's fine. Uh, feel free to go for it on this one. It, this is one of the few tracks that Sweeper performs at its best. Uh, Night Burner is beautiful on this track. It doesn't have any major issues. Uh, but it's just not as fast as others, so if you do want a fast track time, you're not going to be using Night Burner. I haven't really got a lot of experience with the Trueno, so I'm not 100% sure on what we're doing, on like what it would do. I imagine it can't be any worse than Baseline, which isn't anything too significant. Uh, 24-7, I feel like I also need some more experience with this car, but it seems okay. I don't think there will be anything wrong with it. We're the same as using Chicane, realistically. Hot Tub is a bit of a bouncy mess of a car. Uh, it should be okay for this track. It's one of those more sturdy ones like Night Burner, but again, speed could be an issue. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't got a lot of experience with any of the newer stuff. Tech Light is just as good as Cub Light, uh, slightly worse than Iridium. And I have not tried Ballistic at all. Uh, might be something to look into. I imagine that realistically you could beat this track with any car in the game. It's just some do it faster and some do it a bit easier. Uh, but yeah, so that's a bit of everything there. Uh, I'm going to take a crack at it with the sweeper next, but we'll see how we go with that later. Uh, feel free to let me know which track you want me to go through next. I am improving a lot with this one, and I feel like I need to redo all of my uh, track tutorials at some point. Thanks for watching, guys.